don't want to go too long, you know, you got places to go. You know, I wanted to play to tell you one more story about Turlock O'Carroll. Um, and the only reason I'm thinking about it is that um, Lillian uh, was talking about his, he wrote a song for a lady named Bridget Cruz. And Bridget Cruz was his great love. And you know, it's funny, when I do a show, I don't know, I don't get out of the house as much as I, as I should lately. And so I'm looking at you and I'm, wonder, I'm always wondering what, you know, what, what your history and what your past is. And um, I'm doing a show down in Iowa on Monday and Tuesday, somewhere down in Iowa, if it's still above water. And this, the lady got me this gig down there and I had known this lady long ago, had great epic romance, and it was just one of the great times of my life. But um, I didn't want to say to this woman, you know, you should give me this gig because uh, I had a really marvelous time with your friend there. And um, so I didn't want to say that sort of thing. So, but O'Carolan had one great love of his life, and it was this lady, Bridget Cruz. And the way it happened was this. Um, when he was about, nobody seems to know for sure, 12 or 13, 14, um, he got smallpox and he went, he lost his sight, went blind. But before he went blind, he had this great romance with this young lady in the countryside. And according to the legends, it was such a beautiful thing, so pure and lovely, that everybody in the whole village in the countryside took enormous pleasure from watching these two people fall in love. And then he did get smallpox, and then the English came to his neighborhood and said, we want your land. And so Turlock O'Carroll's family was uprooted from the county of Meath and sent over to the county of Roscommon, where the land is very, very poor. And he was taken in by a very wonderful woman named Mary McDermott Rowe, who had some of her land left. And she had him given lessons for three years. And he went on to become Ireland's greatest musician, greatest composer, a great hero to his countrymen, a great man entirely. And he went on to get married somebody else. And they say that he loved and was faithful to his wife. But they also say that he never forgot that woman. But 25 years after they had parted, he was going across to a place called Loch Derg in County Donegal. It's a penitential journey. And if you would go there, you'd go to cleanse yourself of your sins. You'd stand on the edge of the lake and you'd, you'd wait for a ferry boat to come out of the mist and take you across to the Holy Island, and you still do this. And there you cleanse yourself of your sins, you pray, you pay your devotions, you do penance, you get back in the ferry boat, you get back to the mainland, and you immediately begin to sin again. <laughs> it was Ireland. But O'Carolan was the first guy back in the boat, apparently because he was relatively light in the sin department. Anyway, he had hold of the railing of the boat, and he was reaching out with his other hand. Now, if you remember nothing about Turlock O'Carolan from this show, which is pretty likely, remember this. They say he had the most amazing power of touch, not because he was blind, not because he was a heart player, this man had the gift. And they also say that if he ever composed a song for you, any of you, anybody that heard that song and knew you well, they'd say, damn, that song is just like you. Because they say that Turlock O'Carolan could capture your spirit just the way a portrait painter could. So there he was, one hand of the railing, one hand reaching out. He took the hands of maybe a dozen people. If you were there, he'd take your hand and help you onto the boat. And then one more hand slipped into his. And they say, immediately cried out, my God, this is the hand of my love. It was his love from 25 years before. So he wrote a tune for her, a number of tunes for her, and he wrote lyrics to go with the tunes. So I'll tell you the lyrics, and then I'll play the tune. And the lyrics are a little peculiar, 
because they're written in Irish and O'Carolyn only spoke Irish. And when they're translated, they're a little bit peculiar, but the images are crystal clear. And when you've heard the lyrics, you'll know exactly how this man, 250 years ago, felt about this woman. And if you don't like it, I want you to come up to me afterwards and recite for me the poem you composed for your beloved, and we'll compare the two. <laughs> he said, lucky the husband, lucky the husband that puts his hand beneath her head. They kiss without scandal, happy as two in their feather bed. Music might listen to her least whisper, learn every note for all are true. While she is speaking, her voice goes softly to charm the herons in their musing. No man who sees her feels uneasy. He goes his way head high, however tired. She is the pearl and being of all Ireland, foot, hand, mouth, breast, all that we desire. So many prizes are not divided. Her beauty is her own, and she is not proud.
And after hearing the song, thanks. Thank you. If the stories are true, then after you've heard the tune, then you'll know her as well as she can be known. And one of the great things about playing all Ireland's music to me is that he lived in really what was one of backwater in Ireland. He lived in County Ross Common most of the time. And in the 18th century, the 17th and 18th centuries, there were essentially no real roads. There were horse tracks, only one real sort of road between uh, Dublin and Belfast. The rest of it was just just backwater, very obscure place. And all the people that wrote songs for are dead and gone and dust on the wind. And the only way they remembered it all is through his music. People don't know much about them, but they know they must have been marvelous people because he wrote beautiful music for him. Now when I'm gone, I'd love to have somebody hear a tune about me and say, well, he must have been a decent sort of guy. I don't know if it would be true. But... <laughs>